If you're anything like me and you've had a long, hard day, you've been swimming the English Channel or climbing the north face of the Eiger or programming your VCR, then by evening time, you'll want some relaxation. And I find the best way to relax is in my kitchen, playing with my food. And I particularly like making pasta. So that's what I'll do today on Consuming Passion, so that you can share in the enjoyment of this simple act. Three basic ingredients are used for my pasta. Flour, eggs, and this little secret ingredient, which I'll introduce later. There are no real mysteries about making your own pasta dough. It's simply plain flour, which I sift onto a spotlessly clean bench. I make a well in the middle, and into that well, I break one egg for every 100 grams of plain flour. I stir in a pinch of salt and about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Now to that mystery ingredient. This is mushroom powder. Ground up dried mushrooms. It can be bought like this, or you could make your own by buying Chinese dried mushrooms and grinding them up in a coffee grinder. It's a very concentrated flavor, so not much is needed. It's almost like a spice. I mix this powder with the eggs and the olive oil and then gradually incorporate the flour from the outside. And once done, it's made into a ball. If it is a bit too firm, I do add a tablespoon or so of water. Now, once it's in a ball shape, I can roll it out with my favorite rolling pin. You don't need a fancy rolling pin either. I use an old piece of broomstick. The rolling pin is lightly floured, as is the work surface. And then I begin rolling into a large, flat piece. I need to roll down to about one to two millimeters thick, adding flour to make sure that the pasta stays dry and doesn't stick to the rolling pin. Then it's lightly floured, rolled up very carefully around the rolling pin. Then the rolling pin is withdrawn, and I cut strips to make up tagliatelle. Then all being well, they should just open out and be ready for cooking. They can either be cooked fresh like this, or they can be dried if you intend using them later, simply by putting them over the rolling pin and putting the rolling pin across the backs of two chairs. Time to cook, and I use lots of boiling water, to which I add a little salt and a little nutmeg to give that pasta just a little extra something. And then in goes the tagliatelle and it's cooked for just two or three minutes. It's best not to overcook because the eggs can actually make the pasta tough. Now, whether you're using homemade pasta or bought pasta, here's a great accompaniment. It's a mushroom and chicken ragu. Onion is stir-fried in some oil, and I do use olive oil for this because I find it does give a good flavor to the final ragu. Then chicken mince is stirred in, breaking it up so it just turns into small clumps. I add a tablespoon of fresh marjoram, or you could use oregano, which is slightly more pungent, or half a teaspoon of dried herbs, but I wouldn't overdo it with the dried herbs. Salt and pepper, and a little chicken stock to moisten. Then I cook mushrooms separately over high heat in another pan, making sure, of course, that they don't stew. Time to serve, and into a warm dish, I put a little of that wonderful mushroom pasta. And on top, some of the chicken ragu, some of the fried mushrooms, an optional extra of pine nuts, a sprinkling of parsley, and some of the liquid in the pan the chicken was in. And there it is, absolutely sensational. Keepability, well, the dish is best eaten immediately. Preparation time, about 45 minutes if you're making your own pasta, and much less if you're using a bought tagliatelle. So there it is, a spectacular dish, and I feel more relaxed already. The perfect partner, I think because of its mild flavors, will be a crisp, dry white wine, such as a Sauvignon Blanc, Australian, of course. From Consuming Passions, till next time, bon appétit.